Hello Taurus, thank you for joining me for your monthly forecast for July. This month begins with the sun in a brilliant location, the sparkling third house, which is all about everyday communication. Mercury, the ruler of everyday communication, is, ironically, in a more muted, uh, more emotional location, along with Venus, your ruler. Now those two t are going to be together, broadly, through till the 9th, so it could be that you're going to have some kind of get-together with the family uh, or spend time with people who were really significant to you. Expect there to be quite a lot of exchange of ideas, especially from the 3rd through to the 7th, because Mercury is going to be in an opposition with Mars. Mars is in a very visible part of your scope, the 10th solar house. This is about your work. It's about how you interact with the world at large. It's about your sense of authority. It's about status. Don't be surprised if at times this month you demonstrate to people a real sense of extra confidence and put yourself across in a way that people have to take notice of what you got to say. But that angle between Mercury and Mars from the 3rd through to the 7th could lead to a few tensions between what's right for you professionally and or how you uh, assert yourself against how other people are feeling who are close to you or perhaps you're going to speak out and be more forceful even about something that you feel quite tender about but the key is not to be defensive and with Mercury in the fourth solar house that is possible I have to be truthful with you. Now by the 10th we do see some big changes which are entirely positive for you because on that day, your ruler Venus moves into a glorious location, moves into the earthy Virgo, so we've got a triplicity with your sign in terms of the earth element. And Venus in, in Virgo is very much being of service, if you like. But coming out of the fourth house, which is very much to do with your environment, making that as pleasing and nurturing as possible, it is more gregarious in Virgo, and Virgos generally have a very good sense of humour. So that part of your nature can start to come to the fore for the rest of the month. But the other big development on the 10th is that Jupiter ends its four-month retrograde. Though it's not actually going to come out of shadow until the 5th of October, so it's not going to get back to the point where the retrograde first began. But I do feel that anything to do with relationships can improve with Jupiter going forwards. And broadly, Jupiter continues to forge a lovely angle to Neptune. There's a three-degree orb, or space, between this aspect being exact. It's a, it's a sextile, but it's very enabling. So I think with Jupiter going forward, still tuning in to the very ethereal, um, sensory uh, location of Neptune in its ruling position in Pisces, means that the idealistic side of your nature, or anyone you encounter, could be something that really lifts you this month, especially around friendships or perhaps even a close romantic alliance. But the second week of this month does see a real power play. There is no other way to present the information because the sun in Cancer goes into an opposition with Pluto, the solar system's tiniest entity, which has been in this location since 2008. And so on one hand, you've got Pluto, which is about power, it's about secrets, it's about desire, it can be about sex, it can be about money, and it's face to face with the sun. Now, for the next six months, I do think it's entirely possible that your ideas are going to become red hot important to you. You're going to feel so much more passionate. Whatever it is that inspires you, you're going to be out there interacting with people, learning more information. And whatever it is you believe in, it's going to become a very personal experience for you during that time. But because you can become so much more passionate, you may meet other people who equally share the same level of passion but see things in an entirely different way. And that can lead to conflict. Because Pluto is about change. The sun is about, it's obviously about essentially energy, it's at the heart of our entire beings. But it's also about us tuning into our ideas and our belief systems in the third house. So if there is some kind of status quo that's being maintained in your situation,
because your natural uh, tendency to stick with what you know, the security feeds your soul, you're a fixed zodiac sign, changes an anathema to you, even if it's been progressively becoming more exciting and tantalising for you in recent times, I do feel, over this next six months, a big change is possible in your circumstances. I can only be honest. It could be that you're just going to start to think about life in an entirely different way. It surprises me that some of the things that were shaped into me when I was a kid, particularly as I was born a little bit later in post-war Britain, um, I don't have those views anymore because I've evolved, I see life in a different way for myself. If you're someone who's very inquisitive, this particular aspect is going to be a real food and water to you. If you are a more conservative person, if you have tended to stick with the traditional, with what you know, this could be a more scary prospect. But only if you make it scary, because the planets aren't making it scary, it's just how you react to the potential. So change, see it as an exciting opportunity to enliven and enrich yourself with a new outlook which can help to feed your soul in a way which is more appropriate for the person you are now, not the person you once were. Now we are, of course, going to see the Sun transit into the sign of Leo on the 23rd, and for the rest of the month we'll be in that sign, and that pitches you back into this issue to do with your environment, your home, your feelings, your family, and of course Mercury's still there, but on the 26th, slams on the brakes, goes into a retrograde. I think there could be some tender conversations towards the end of this month because of this, and particularly because of Mercury uh, going backwards in the fourth solar house. Fourth solar house can see us bottle things up a little bit, to be honest, because Mercury being the ruler of both Gemini and Virgo, it's about articulating our thoughts. In the fourth house, which is essentially the characteristics of cancer, it's about emotion. So it's not so easy to say how we feel, to ventilate our emotions. So what can happen is the thoughts, Mercury, go round and round in our mind or our hearts or our tummies, whichever part of the body the emotions are being trapped, and we don't necessarily articulate them outwards. So you may find yourself thinking about things very carefully. But then an even more dramatic event occurs when on the 27th, there is a total lunar eclipse, again, which is going to provide a backdrop in a pair, a polar axis, along with the partial solar eclipse through the next six months of the year. But this one occurs in Aquarius, of course, because it's opposite Leo, but it's combining with Mars. Now, Mars may be retrograde, and it's also uh, in an opposition, not just with the Sun, but the North Node in Leo. So we've got four energies there competing. And I think what you do about your future and how it works for you at an emotional level can be part and parcel with this agenda feeding into change that you're thinking about on the back of that so partial solar eclipse. The lunar eclipse is much more about how it feels. And it could be scary. Or you could be showing an amazing amount of confidence to make a change because Mars is in a very vivid location, your mid solar midheaven, and because it's influencing the moon, it could make you a little bit more, if I dare say, even reckless. I was very careful about saying that word because obviously you can be very thoughtful about your moves, but the backdrop you see, Taurus, is that Uranus, in your sign since the middle of May, actually goes back into a square with Mars in the last 10 days of this month. So it's possible that you might be a little bit more reckless than you might anticipate. Think back to what happened in May. If there were some strong power struggles then, or you had some intense discussions or thoughts, they could be played out once more. Now there is actually a gorgeous angle between Venus and Pluto in the last uh, week of this month. And if there is someone or people in your life that you love very deeply, you can become much more conscious of it. So the lunar eclipse in that kind of situation may be more about the personal satisfaction you get from work. Is it something that gives you a, natural, a naturally emotional high? If you're doing something that's brilliantly well paid but you really are bored out of your brains, 
I think Uranus being right at the early part of your sign, especially if you're early born Taurus, could be making you feel quite edgy, but also quite excited about making some changes. But you'll perhaps know that if you do, it is going to affect stability. And that's a hard choice to make. It's just natural, isn't it? But Jupiter is forging a beautiful angle as it comes out of that retrograde with Neptune. And that's going to go on broadly all this month. So remember, you can connect to people who are good for your soul or one particular person. There is an opportunity to connect with someone in a relationship context, which is a very uplifting experience. But I just think generally ideas are really going to be popping all around you. It could be about moving overseas. It could be about learning a foreign language. It may be uh, applying for a course of higher education as a mature student. It may be about changing your job completely. It may be about chucking it all in and going off on a world backpacking tour. But some kind of change that you may is, I feel, going to have an impact on the stability of your world, but it may be a change you just can't resist making if you feel that life has become so stupefyingly predictable that you've lost a real sense of feeling alive. And that's what all of us need to have, because life is so short. It's unbelievable how it whizzes by. So, you may have some big decisions to make this month, Taurus. Try not to rush into them. There is an opportunity to have some very intense discussions. If you can listen as much as speak, I think you could be greatly enriched by what other people have to say. But I think Mars has certainly got something in store for you, and that is that change may be good. So what's the other aspect I can tell you about that might surprise you? Well, it's the fact that Uranus is forging a fantastic link with Saturn all through this month. Now, Saturn, of course, is in Capricorn, your night solar house, about change, about newness, freshness. But Saturn, of course, is about obstacles, and it's about, in this location, the law, and doing things in the right and proper way. But with uh, Uranus in your sign, I think if you're directing some kind of growth in your situation, some kind of expansion, but in a way which is well thought out and organised, so you're not just pitching into it without uh, a great deal of reflection, and you're doing your research, any changes you make could work, and they really could bring your life alive with a mixture of spontaneity, but creating a new stability, but in a different kind of way or context. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you so much for joining me. I'd love it if you would like or comment on this video, or if you've yet to do so, subscribe to my channel. Good luck and goodbye. Hello, thank you so much for watching my video. I'd love you to join me at my Horoscope Ace app. You can find this at www.horoscope-ace.com. You can use it through Android, iOS, Apple or Facebook. Check out your Ascendant or your Moon site or download your free birth chart. There's all your favourite videos, plus there are daily, weekly, monthly and yearly horoscopes for general, love, Chinese and Indian astrology. If your passion is tarot, there's my brilliant three-card money or love tarot readings too. And it's all there at www.horoscope-ace.com. Thank you.